welcome to my second first year boot camp. Today, I'm going to show you how to set up a remote SSH connection to the school server so you basically never have to touch no machine again. <laughs> and I'm also going to tell you how to customize your remote machine to take it from drab to fab. <laughs> So here is kind of I'm I'm in my I'm on my actual computer this time because Windows 8 couldn't handle these steps. So I was like, let me show you on my real computer. And this is kind of like the finished result that you're going to have, but like tailored to your taste. You can pick the font, you can pick the color and everything. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, but first, I'm going to start with um, SSHing into the school server. Is everyone ready? No, I know machine. Let's go. <laughs> All right. So when I'm going to give you a couple like minutes to set start up your no machine. I mean, not no machine. Uh, I'm going to give you some minutes to start up your own VS code so you can kind of follow along as I talk. And in that time, I'm going to be looking at the chat. So tell me what you guys did today. We love the enthusiasm, Hannah. We love the enthusiasm. <laughs> All right. No, not no machine. I meant VS Code. Yes, you did. <laughs> we did go out today. So while everyone is just opening up, Visual Studio code, then I'm just going to be looking at the chat messages. Is it yes machine, no machine, maybe machine? The world will never know. <laughs> um, and like when like a good when a good amount of people have had like have have a Visual Studio code ready to go, just let me know in chat so I know when to like progress. I'm just, while I wait for you guys, I'm just going to like scroll through my code so you can kind of see how much better it looks when you actually tailor your workspace to your taste. Like a lot of people don't think it's important to like, you know, customize things and that's okay. But, but I am a person who always goes out of their way to like make everything their own. So like what I've noticed is when I do have my customizations on in my workspace, like I'm much more productive because I like what I'm seeing and it makes me feel like comfortable when I work instead of like having jarring colors that I don't like show up on the screen. It's a, it's the little thing, but sometimes it's the little things in life. So. <laughs> Just let me know when you um, open Visual Studio Code. Oh, um, by the way, before I forget, if you guys, yeah, it is very red. I like warm colors. <laughs> you couldn't tell by my hair. <laughs> but um, yeah, basically with the steps that we're doing today, you're going to want to make sure if you don't have an SSH installed on your server, I mean, installed on your computer, you're going to want to ensure that you have SSH installed in your server already. I mean, your computer already. So basically, if you have no machine installed already, you're okay. Or if you have another um, program that uses SSH, like Putty or um, what is Bitly or something, um, like just something that uses SSH, what you can do if you're not sure if you have SSH is go to apps and features on your system settings and then find find um the the one that says um ssh hold on where is it oh optional features yeah <laughs> okay so if you don't have this here make sure that you have it by installing no machine on your computer or just another program which has this client there. 
You can also go to this button, press add a feature, and just open it right here. So basically, just um, if you don't have it already, you're going to need it. So just click on this box where it says open SSH client. Um, you don't need the server, but you can have it if you want. I'm just going to install it just so you can see how it looks. And yeah, basically, you want to make absolutely sure that you do this. Otherwise, the process won't work. Um, OK, let me check. Let me go back to checking. OK, so I'm going to assume that you all have Visual Studio Code open by now. <laughs> so what you want to do is you want to now to set up your um, SSH target. Your SSH target is going to be how you access the school server. So you want to click on this plus icon right here. It says add new. And you're going to wait first. I'm going to start from the um, explore menu. So you're opening up VS Code and everything looks fine. You're going to go on to go to re remote explorer, which is this little desktop icon looking thing here on the left side of the screen. Click on it and then press add new right next to the SSH targets. And then what you're going to do is you're going to input your school email, but it's going to be different. So you know how your school email is usually um, Awenya, well, that's my last name, but yours is going to be different, of course. Awenya at uwinsor.ca, it usually looks like that. What I want you to do instead of that, you're just going to put an extra CS dot here. Like CS dot uinsor dot us. I mean, CS dot uinsor dot CA. <laughs> yeah. And it should be okay. So I'm just going to enter that into the field and then press enter to confirm my input. And then you can select any file you want. It doesn't really matter, but I would just go with the top one because that's the safest option. <laughs> so open this file. And OK, you're going to see um, a lot of your files. If you have already opened VS Code, I mean, if you have already opened the, um, the school server from VS Code, you're going you're gonna to see like all your past files here so you can just easily jump to them. But what you're going to usually see is something like this because you have no files in there yet. Um, I'm just going to check the chat to make sure, sure everything's going OK. <laughs> you Windsor.xyz, I didn't even know that was an option. <laughs> the more you know. OK, so I'm going to go to connect to host a new window. So you click on that. And now this is like a new window with everything um, like with everything that has the school server, like everything that the school server has on it, this window has. So you're going to enter your password for your, your school account. So basically enter your school account password, press enter. And then you should be in for like first time users. It takes a little bit to set up. So like it takes a little bit to, you know, run through the process. So while I'm going to give you guys time to let it run through the process, because I know it takes a lot of time. So while we do that, I'm just going to get you started with customizing your desktop. So I'm going to reset everything to the default which makes me sad, <laughs> but I'm just going to like work with you guys from the ground up. So oh, wait, I'm just going to go to setting. You don't you guys don't need to do this. I'm just this. Um, I'm just uh, disabling my theme for you guys. You know what, if I just uninstall it, oh wait, disabled, there we go. Okay, so now it's back to <laughs> the normal 
color theme. Um, and this should look a little, <clears throat> this should look a little more familiar to you guys. I'm gonna, <coughs> sorry. <laughs> I don't know, I think I need water, but we're gonna power through it. Okay, so I'm gonna go search up font and just disable my font. So usually I'm just I'm just setting it up to how it used to look, so don't don't worry about doing these steps yet. Okay, so this should look familiar. <laughs> I'm just gonna save this here so I don't forget it. Okay. So basically, now you have a <laughs> you have a drab desktop that you want to customize to your liking. Make sure that you check on your other window from time to time. This is the um, this is the SSH window that's SSHing into the school server. Make sure you keep tabs on this progress because um, if you haven't and if you haven't done this before, which most of you haven't you're going to have like a loading bar while it gets itself set up. So make sure you keep tabs on this window every now and then. Okay, but back to the um, customization. So what you want to do is head over to extensions and basically just try out things that you like. For example, okay, so I'm going to pretend that I'm one of you guys. So I want one of you guys to tell me like your favorite color in chat. You're right, it is so boring. <laughs> okay, so we got purple from Sauce, yellow from U Windsor CSS, and red from, uh, I think that's Damien? Okay, yes. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys how to do three different color schemes because it's really that simple. All you have to do is click a button and find things that you like. So um, I'm gonna go to extensions and I'm just literally gonna search up purple theme because I know there's a lot of purple themes like okay you guys who like uh cool colors you guys are in luck because a lot of people also like cool colors so there is a bunch of purple green and blue themes that you can find with minimal effort so I'm just going to install this one it says shades of purple and now you can just kind of look and everything's purple now also you can you can set it back to the dark theme, but we're here to look at the purple one. So, and you can, oops, this is the wrong term. I mean, this is the SSH one. So yeah, okay. But you see how everything, like all my um, notes, I mean, all my workspaces are the same color now because of this thing. So this is the purple theme. It's pretty snazzy. I like this one. <laughs> um, you can see how the you can see how the um, usual font is like different colors than how it used to be, and basically with every every um, change you make to the the extension, each extension comes with its own set of colors. So not just the not the background color only changes, everything else changes with it. So you're gonna make sure that you find a theme that you like that is also um like has easy text colors to read i'm just gonna pick from my list of themes on the side because um these are pretty good from my like my experience uh, the bearded theme has a lot of different themes that you can choose like um it has like 22 <laughs> and it also has like a a handy um Wait, no, this is the wrong one. It's Patty, sorry. The Patty color theme has a lot of um, th different things you can choose. And it's actually the one that I was using before. Don't ever choose light mode because otherwise you need to seek help <laughs> if you choose light mode. <laughs> actually, you, it's okay if you choose light mode because, you know, everything ha everyone has different things that work for them. But also seek help. <laughs> 
<laughs> what if I don't have a beard? I don't have a beard either, but beard theme is open to everyone. No exclusion here. No exclusion here. So I'm gonna um, go back to the patty color theme. And you can see, I'm just gonna minimize my terminal for now because we're not really coding. We're not doing real work. <laughs> so um, you can see how there's this GIF here. Yes, it is pronounced GIF, not GIF. The owner of the GIF said so, and I will die on this hill. But um, so anyway, you can look at the GIF here and just kind of find out um, which one, which color you like, and make sure you make a note of its name here. So for example, I'm looking at this, uh, you're looking at this GIF of me, right? Which one do you guys want me to pick? The creator can't be wrong because they are the maker of the thing. Frosty. Okay, so Chris Gofran says Frosty. So we're going to do Frosty. Frosty the snowman. Right in time for Christmas. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go, Chris Gopher. All right. So um, this is the wrong one. I'm just going to minimize it so it doesn't get in our way. Okay, okay, actually, no, I take it back. JK Rowling is built different in the wrong ways. So yeah, okay, well, okay, it is GIF. I'm just gonna say that <laughs> it is GIF. All right, so I'm gonna enable it because I disabled it before. Okay, um, now I'm gonna run it. Okay, here. Now the set color button is here. So I'm going to choose the frosty theme. Frost. It's it's frost. Um, it better not be the light theme. It better not be the light theme. So if you're also, side note, if you're, if you have like an upright font, well, I'm actually going to get to that later. That's more font things. But just don't be, uh, don't be like uh, confused by the the normal option and the upright option, I'll tell you what those are for later. So let's choose for <laughs> his light theme. Oh no. <laughs> but now you can see, uh, you can see how it looks very different and in a eye searing way. My eyes will never recover, but you can see the kind of difference it makes to the theme. Now everything's like kind of frosty, like the snow on the ground and, uh, like the, the colors are obviously different for the for the uh, actual commands because you need to be able to see the colors on the light background. Okay, anyone else have a color that they want me to try out because my eyes can't take this much longer? <laughs> um, I'm gonna let you guys look at the GIF again. And I'm gonna check the chat. <laughs> oh, so you were just trolling. Okay, blue. So we're going to like look with our eyes to see. I mean, what else would you look with? But um, we're going to look with our eyes to see what like blue that they have. So um, let's wait for the GIF to show us a blue. Okay, so Inkstone and Citadel kind of look like blues that we could use. So So this is the inkstone theme. It's like blue and orange. It reminds me of like Perry the Platypus. <laughs> it does though. <laughs> but the one thing I like about these um, extensions specifically is that the colors they choose go really well together. So yeah. Um, and then I'm going to try another blue just to see like the difference between actual colors. So um did I say, what did I say before I saw it? I said, um, I said Citadel and Inkstone. Yes, Inkstone. So, and then this is Inkstone, which is like a cooler blue. Oh wait, no, I tried this one before. We're trying Citadel. Okay. Yeah, and this one's just a really brighter blue, kind of like Peacock almost. Um, and you can see that the colors are also similarly brighter as well. So I highly recommend, like, if you just want to play around with, um, 
colors and um like if you want to play around with the colors and different themes but you don't want to like spend hours looking through themes and you want like a pack that really has a lot of versatility download the bearded theme and the patty color theme because they come with like a lot of options and easy ways to visualize like for the bearded theme it comes with like a a really long picture that you can look at that kind of um shows you guys what each color looks like and then for patty color theme we have the gif so and if you want to look for any color in specific as i said just search up like green theme or and then just install it and now everything is this kind of green i mean it kind of looks like a uh, puke <laughs> it kind of gives me shrek vibes but i also like green a lot so actually i could get used to this but anyways yes yeah, so I think now we can check the other window and your SSH connection should be installed by now. Like your SS you should be able to SSH into the server now. Like it should be done loading in the bottom right corner. Is it pronounced Gfe or Gwefe? <laughs> If my peanut butter be moving like gifs, I ain't eating it. Oh my god, yeah. It was actually, I think the creator said the way they named it had something to do with the actual peanut butter, further proving that the real way to say it is gif. All right. All right. So now I think, like, is anyone having issues? Actually, if you guys are having issues, um we're gonna have like a q a session at the end of this to make sure that no one is having issues i am gonna justify it because i know i'm right <laughs> so um we're gonna have a q a session at the end of this to like help you guys with your issues but for right now we're just gonna move along to see how things work so um i'm gonna change this green theme because i don't like it very much <laughs> i mean it's kind of cute it's like it's it's nice <laughs> I, I don't mind. I don't hate it. There's obviously worse options. Um, I'm just going to change it to my favorite from the bearded theme collection, which is the earth one. I, I like to just change it. Like you can literally, because it is so easy to change, you can like change it every day if you want. Um, but yeah, so I'm just going to stick with this one. So now if we go to our terminal here, we're connected to the remote. So what you're going to see here is you're going to see open folder and like you could like if you were doing it normally, this is where you would open your workspace. Right. But because you are now connected to no machines, like you're not connected to no machine system, which is the school system, you can just open the folder and all these folders should look like what you have in no machine. Like there's the wine folder, which I never really understood what wine is for. Um, I just know that it's on no machine. So, um, and there's like the, the SSH thing and the dot cups and the dot icons. And most importantly, all your no machine fold fires, fi files and folders are right here for you to look at. So if I go to downloads, for example, because that's where I was keeping all my no machine things. Oh, wait. Okay. A good, a good um, way to test though is like going to your desktop. And remember one of our first assignments, I think it was the first lab we ever did, you had to create a fall folder on your desktop and then you had to create a comp 1400 folder. So click on those and like, it should be like, just like that. And you'll see, oh wait, you have to enter your password again. Security, security. So you're gonna see that your first program <laughs> I mean, your first program, because a bunch of you guys were already programming way before this class. Um, but so you can see your first program is right here from lab one. Oh, my gosh. These are the those are the times when life was easy. <laughs> but yeah, so you can run it and everything. And the way you run it is like how you run it on no machine. Like all the commands are the same. 
So you can even see how it says like Oenya Alpha here and like um it looks exactly like no machine. The thing is I don't use no machine anymore so I, I kind of forgot how to run things in no machine but i'm gonna try and remember so gcc oh god gcc first program because i've just been using visual studio code i think since the second week of school <laughs> um i'm not a fake programmer i swear i'm not an imposter okay so first program okay uh okay hold on i can remember i can remember yep okay so then you do dot slash first prog or whatever you you decide to name it and then welcome to see kelly Owenya, which is my name and goodbye and then that's basically it so everything is the same as as um no machine so what you're going to do now is that you have this information, I'm just going to check chat to see if like anyone's struggling. Oh, yeah. Thank you guys for helping. Thank you guys for helping. I didn't see. So I figured that out by myself, which I'm proud of. But thank you guys for helping. <laughs> so y'all getting philosophical back up in here. What is a program? What isn't a program? <laughs> I guess we'll never know. OK, so um now what you can do is because of the fact that n like the school server and your files on the school server are completely different from your files on your actual real computer that you're using to run vs code and all those things you need to like i'm sure you guys have noticed by now but you need to um actually import your files into the the school server before you can like do things in them. So I'm just gonna close this one. Um, file, I'm gonna open folder. I'm gonna open my usual folder where I like do things. So here it is. And you can see my lab eight assignment right here. <laughs> um, so what you're gonna do now is I'm gonna show you how to import things from your real computer into the school server because of the fact that why I'm able to access all my school files from VS Code now is because it is connected to the school server. But that's not usual. Like for when you make a file on your real computer, like when you make a file here in your real computer, it doesn't automatically go to the school server. You have to you have to put it in there or transfer it in there some way. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. So for example, we're gonna take the the guessing game thing that I gave you guys in the first lab as like a kind of tutorial program to see what VS Code can do. So I'm gonna give it to you here. Well, I think, okay, I'm just gonna put the link in chat just in case anyone wasn't here for um, the first, the first, uh, what is it? The first, um, not me exposing all my notes, okay. Um, <laughs> the first workshop the first workshop so um what did i name it again okay hold on i'm just gonna hide my screen for now i'm gonna come back uh hold on let me just find the link in my notes because it is here Okay, perfect. I found it. Okay, just got to send it to the 
chat. Okay, and I'm gonna share my screen again. Perfect, perfect. Okay, so now what you can do is use that file that I sent there, if you don't already have it, to to put it in the, um, what is it? You, you can put it into your Visual Studio Code normally, not your terminal, not your like terminal where you're accessing uh, no machines files from but like your your actual like workspace those of you who have already attended the first workshop you should already have it there so no need for you guys i'm just like making sure everyone's has a program that they can test it out on okay so now that we're back on track what i like to do there's like a formal way to do this but like this way is just faster um if you want to let's say if you want to move this you you wrote a program on um, VS Code, but you want to move it to the school server, what you just do is copy all the text of the program and put it, we'll open a new file. I'm just going to open a new folder first. Oops, not inside Lab 8, but I'm going to open a new file first. Testing. Oh, wait, actually don't put don't put like punctuation inside folders. That's bad. Okay, so testing and then file. And I'm gonna name it the exact same thing that I named my um, original file. So Kelly guessgame.c. And then enter. And then now what you just do is copy and paste the code right in there. And now it's on the school server too. And you'll always you can even if you wanted to go back to no machine. Well, I don't know why anyone would willingly want to go back to no machine, you're going to be able to access this folder from no machine now because it, of the fact that it's on the school server. So now I'm going to teach you guys how to like make a script file because I think like um, knowing how to make a script file is really tricky, but a lot of the TAs in Comp 1400 require you guys to have like a script file in your submission for full marks. So this is how I make script files using VS Code. So now that I have um, now that I have my uh, my file here, let's say I want to make a script file of just this. And so what I would do is I would go to I would CD into the folder just like on No Machine. So CD testing. Okay, and then now I would say um, script. And now you can uh, put any like script name that you want. So I would just be like testing type scripts. So this is basically going to create the script file with testing type script as its name. If you want a different name, just like replace testing type script with whatever you want. And then press enter. And it says script started output log file is testing type script. So now if you want to add a, um, a program to your script file, just do cat. You have to do cat first. I don't know why, but you just have to. So you have to put cat first and then the program name dot C. So Kelly guess game dot C. And then you're going to see the entire program in this window. <laughs> that means it's like successfully gone onto the script file. So then now what you want to do is like if there was more, if there was more programs that we need to scan, you would just do cat again and then whatever program that you wanted. And then you can do multiple programs in the same script file. So for the labs that have a lot of different exercises, this is great. So now what you want to do is you want to, while you're done your script file, you want to do exit just like that, type in exit. And then it's going to say script done. And you're going to see that testing TypeScript is in your folder. So how you you um, hand it in to the to like the site is you because you need to make sure that it's on your actual computer first because it's just on the school server. It's not on your actual computer. 
So you have to download it to your actual computer. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to find it to hand it in. So then you press download here, just right click and then press download. And then um, go to wherever you like to put things. I like to put all my lab folders in um, like this comp 1400 lab files. But like you probably have a different way where you want to like save them. So it's up to you. And then just press download. And then they should actually be in your files now. So then you just head to where you, you saved it. And what I like to do is I like to rename it. I, I like to rename it testing typescript.txt. So it's like a more readable format for the TA who has to mark your work. It's just a it saves it saves like um everyone in the end. And then this way you can actually view that it's a real TypeScript file, but I mean it's a real script file before you send it out. So and then you can like if you double click on it, you can open it and you can see how like the script file looks just to make sure everything's okay it looks good to me then you just hand it in <laughs> and i i'm sure you know got how to hand files in so i don't need to teach you that but now you know how to make a script file so if you you are you're always getting marks off for like missing your script file or like not knowing where to find it or make it there's how so now um that's pretty much all i use um vs code i mean th this pretty much all i use um what is it the school connection for just to make script files because <laughs> like i could code in here just like a regular like a regular coding i could start a new file and i could be like test program dot c and i could just start coding if i wanted to but I'm not as familiar with um, the commands with the terminal as I am familiar with the commands on the terminal when it's natural, like when it's um, in the actual VS Code. So I'm going to show you the difference between the two terminals. So you can already see that these, this terminal looks like this, and it has this thing right here. But when I go to my main terminal, like how I usually use it, um, new terminal. It looks like this, which I'm like more comfortable with personally, but like everyone has different preferences. So if you want to, if you want to do all your work in the school server, you can. You just got to make sure that when you are handing in your actual files, you know how to export them from the school server which is again just right click and press download um but that's basically what i use the the um the school server for so i basically never have to open no machine again ever in my life <laughs> and for that i am grateful all right so um did i forget the body of the script did i forget something that's usually what I how I do script files. Oh, okay, okay. I was like, oh my god, is there something I'm missing? But okay, now because we've kind of tackled how to SSH into the school server, what I'm gonna do now is a quick tutorial on fonts, and then the Q and A session will follow. So for fonts, everyone has their different like um their different ah preferences. So I'm just going to show you the, the three default fonts that come with the thing. Uh, what you're going to want to do to, um, like, you could just edit it using the, the, the settings, or you could go into the actual JSON file. But, like, be careful if you actually go into the, the JSON file, because uh, if you mess up, it's going to be hard to fix. <laughs> um, and it's also less easy to understand. So I'm just going to go and find where the font is. Font. I 
I don't use this way, so I don't know where to find the font normally because I always just kind of edit it in the settings JSON file because I like to look dangerously. Uh, oh, here. Okay, so basically just search up editor font family. So editor font family. Okay. Um, you could open the actual JSON file if you want, but this is like the easier way to explain it. So I'm just gonna show you the three default fonts right now. So here's monospace, which is like the basic, basic default font. And um, now you can see that it looks like this. Oh, I think this is actually the default font like that you guys are having. So yeah. This is the, do you guys have this font? Cursive font VS Code one. I have the cursive font. I have it. <laughs> That's what I'm going to show you guys how to download because it, it's far superior, but not Russian cursive. Russian cursive, like, okay, I'm going to just show you guys Russian cursive for those who don't know what Russian cursive is. Russian cursive, if you ever can code in this, like, you must be a super, like, a superhuman because, like, look at this. This is Russian cursive. <laughs> basically scribbles on a paper <laughs> so yeah don't try to code in russian cursive guys perfect sense to me you're just built different you're built different okay <laughs> so this is the monospace font you know like it, it does oops i'm just gonna close this now because we don't need it um it does the job it's a it's a bit thin for me um it's yeah like it's kind of it would be it would put strain on my eyes to read this for a while but like if you like monospace then it comes with the font family so you don't have to worry um then courier new also comes pre-installed and the thing is if a font if a font is like a uh, more than two words oh oops courier new if the font is like more than one word you have to put like a you have to put these apostrophes in front of it and in the back to okay why is curry new not working okay well you know just don't use it <laughs> just don't use it um because i think that was part of the default fonts but i don't have curry new installed on my computer because it's ugly so <laughs> But you can try Consulus because Consulus should be pre-installed. Yeah, and Consulus is this one. So I it's the one that we were using before, I think. And so those are the default fonts that come with the editor. But now I'm gonna show you how to be extra. You can you can I think you can even do Comic Sans. I don't know, because okay, the thing is. With every font that you make, like every font that you use, it has to be monospace. Um, if and what you mean by mono, what I mean by monospace is basically, if it if it's not working, just find a monospace font. Just search up monospace fonts on Google, and you should find something. Or if there's a if there's a font that people are already using with VS Code, then it's monospace, because <laughs> otherwise it won't work. So. Now I'm just gonna go back to my default settings, which is what I had. So, child, what is this? Why is the, <laughs> why is the fall oh, weird? Okay, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Before we panic, do I just have to press enter? Um, Why am I coding in Times New Roman? <laughs> Wait. Okay, so let's see what happens when we try to, oh, is it because I have quotation marks in here? I think so. Yeah, okay, yeah, it's because I have quotation marks. So don't surround it with quotation marks, guys. Uh, but um, now you can see Operator Mono Light. Operator Mono is what a lot of people use as their like default fancy font for this, for this, um, what is it, for VS Code? So you're going to see like a lot of the people on YouTube doing YouTube tutorials who want to give their 
workspace and a little extra kick, they're using operator mono light. So this is operator mono light. So it does have the cursive kind of like look to it, but it's a little more like thinner and stylized. I like this one a lot too. I like its Fs a lot. <laughs> like, I don't know, it just makes me happy. But um, like, it's a, it's a nice font. I would, I would use this. I did use this for a while, but then I upgraded to my favorite font. But yeah, this is a good like option. Um, I'm gonna show you guys how to, um, oh, you guys, you guys are, um, you guys realized what my, oh my, uh, what is it? My problem was when the fonts wouldn't scan. You guys are smart. <laughs> but um, so basically this is operator monolay. And then this one, oh, did I just delete everything else? Oh, I, I have it in my notes. I'm okay. <laughs> um, this one, Cartograph CF Lite is basically my favorite font and the font I use all the time. I'm not gonna make the same mistake again. Not wrapping any quotes this time. Okay. And this is like, this one is like the easiest for me to read. I was a nerd, I learned cursive in grade school. <laughs> so it, I know it's not technically cursive, but it has like a cursive look to it, which I really do appreciate. And, um, it's like the regular font is easy to read as well. So it's just really nice to have. So um, that's why I prefer to use this font, but everyone has different preferences. Like you're probably gonna like to use something else. So um, I'm gonna show you guys how to find your font that you want now. So what you're gonna do is search up monospace fonts for VS Code or just like fonts for coding. Because like if they're already using them in VS Code, chances are that it's gonna work with VS Code. So let's just say um, I'm trying to look for something I don't already have. Like that's Operator Mono. If you guys recognize, that's Operator Mono. Um, and you can just look. Oh, that's actually I like this one a lot um but i don't know how to do that one so we can find out but it doesn't have the font name there so you can spend time tracking it down but that's going to take too long unless you're really like if you want to um because like i actually might track that down after my after my uh i was gonna say after my shift ends this is work <laughs> um after my what is it after my t talk ends so um you can just basically kind of look around and see if there is things that you like. So I'm gonna already, I already have one in mind that I don't have installed, but a lot of people seem to like, so I'm just gonna let you know how to install it. So this one, a Sphera code, yes. So Sphera code looks basically like this. And it's like very nice to look at, but the thing is it also has ligatures. So when you make like a, for example, like my other, oops, that's my Discord. Uh, when you make um, like a greater than or equal sign, usually you have to type it out like this, right? You have to type it out like this. Well, obviously not with a space, but like, you know what I mean? It looks separated like that, but with like fonts with ligatures, then it looks like this, which kind of like gives you a nice like visual aid. Oh wait, oops. I put the I put the mathematical symbol on the wrong side because I was like, it shouldn't look like an arrow. Um, so if you wanted to do greater than or equal to, see that I'm doing what I'm doing is just putting in the greater than sign and the equal sign next to each other, but then it automatically does this for me, which could be like nice to look at. Um, ligatures are just something that makes makes sense for me to use. Um, so it's just kind of like a quality of life thing. And this font comes with ligature, so you guys might like it. So what we're gonna do is we decided we like the Fira Code font. So you're just gonna search up Fira Code font on Google. And yes, I have Google Dark Mode because Google Dark Mode is superior. <laughs> and what you're gonna do is you can like click on the GitHub link or you can click on the Google fonts and 
you just do font download. Russian Chris and Mono, y'all can only dream. <laughs> All right, so I'm just gonna click on Google Fonts. And I'm gonna download the entire family because no one gets left behind. And it should like have this little zip file here that opens up. And yes, I have WinRAR. No, I didn't pay for it because who does? Um, and what you want to do is you you want to um, extract this. And you can put it wherever you want, just as long as it's on your computer. But I'm just going to put it where... I, I guess I can put in my downloads. It's fine. Yeah. So, okay. And then what you want to do is you want to go to your downloads or wherever you extracted it. And then now what you want to do in order for it to work and don't forget to don't forget this step, but you have to find the true type font file. It looks like this, like it, if you're using windows, it looks like a paper with the A on the corner. You open it and you should see something like this. And you have to press, you have to for, press install. Like if you forgot to press install, it won't work. So you have to press install for this to work. So press install and it's just installing right there. And then now you can actually use the font in VS Code. So then you hop on over to VS Code and you do, you go to your um, settings and you go to, um settings again and just go to font family not don't do the code lens font family because i don't know what that is but what you want to do is you have to you want to put in the new font that you just downloaded so um you go here and you have to type in the font name like it appears right here so fira code light the the official font name is fira code light so then you have to type in Fira code light, just like that. But don't forget if the font is like multiple, has multiple words in it, then you have to surround it with um, apostrophes so it will be able to recognize. Okay. Um, and the thing is, it has my old font right now because we have to restart VS Code in order for the changes to take effect. So I'm just going to exit out of VS Code and then start it again. Okay, and it's right there waiting for me. Um. Okay, okay. Uh, is there a place where I can save my... Okay, I'm just gonna edit the... Oh, okay. I have to go to workspace and edit it, I think. Yeah, okay, yeah, we have to edit it in workspace too. If you wanna make a change, make sure you edit it in both places. So go to workspace and edit it as well. And then now, it should work. So if we go to guest game, then you see Fira code and it's right there and it's all ready. So you might, you might like notice how some of these things are strangely tilted. And it's because in my settings, like I made things tilted because of the fact that if you use a, if you decide to use a cursive font, um, if you decide to use a cursive font, like, uh, like the one I was using earlier, the cursive effect won't show unless some of your code is in italics, which is like, I don't know, kind of weird, but that's how they decide to do it. So also you can have multiple fonts in the font bar here. It just has to be, um, it just has to be, what is it? The one that you wanna use has to be in the front. Cartograph CF Lay, I think is the one I'm, I'm using. Yep. Okay. So if you don't have um, fonts, what is it? I'm just going to edit the JSON file because see, 
okay, where did I put all the italics again? This is just something that I did, so don't worry about it. It shouldn't be this short. Okay. We saw it in VS Code. I'm just going to refresh my memory. Sorry, guys. <laughs> All right, so, um, okay, perfect. So open the command palette and open settings. Okay, perfect. Okay, and open settings JSON. Okay, perfect. So what I did is I kind of taught myself JSON a bit uh, just to make sure things are um, in italics, but I'm just going to take this part out because of the fact that we don't need it. Um, so I can show you guys how it's supposed to look without any modifications. And I'm just going to make a note of that so I can set it back to how I like it after. Okay. Okay, so now we should be free to get rid of everything. So I'm just gonna, I'm just doing this. So it looks exactly how you would experience it. Um, and see, there's like little errors popping up. Because VS Code is great for making you catch what you wouldn't have guessed otherwise. There's still one error. Oh, hold on. <laughs> this is why you don't usually want to mess with JSON files because it can go south really fast. Missing property scope. Oh, I can't just delete the entire scope. Okay. Um, Um, and then I just put this there, so it's not missing anything. Okay, <laughs> I am just gonna copy paste what I had in my notes back again. And just put a close, okay, just put a close bracket, then it should be fine. Yep, okay, and a dot. Uh, anyways, it should run. <laughs> I think so. Oh, there's no comma here. Um. Okay, so we're just going to pretend that doesn't exist. Oh, actually, you guys might know. You guys might know. Um, this is why you don't teach yourself JSON. <laughs> Or actually teach yourself JSON, but rely on a course to do it. Okay, so. Oh, it's not a dot there, it's a comma. Okay, 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 I understand, I understand. Okay, now everything's fine. I'm a great programmer. I know the answer to everything. All right, so now you can you can probably um, see that all the unnecessary italics should be gone. I'm just gonna get rid of the italic here. So it's gonna be exactly like how you guys would experience it. Okay, yeah. So see how everything is straight up right now. So this is a cursive font we're back on track now this is a cursive font but you wouldn't be able to know because nothing is in italics so the cursive properties of this font don't show 
So what you would usually want to do is go to your extensions. And this is why you have to pick a theme with the italics now. So you see how before we had this option of doing color themes, but now it is um, there. So there's like the regular version and then there's the upright version. You can see like we're just going to choose the same color. So let's choose um, yesterday. So yesterday, if you choose upright yesterday, you're not going to you're not going to have any italics. So you're not going to have any cursive font, which is like kind of both. So you want to make sure that if you select a cursive font like operator mono or cartograph CF like I did, then you want to make sure that you go to a theme that has italics built in and they'll say it has italics built in in like it's um details or whatever like a lot of people a lot of people yeah see it, it's it'll say here like italic version so you know that you can use it with cursive so then you do color theme i'm and then you select the the yesterday version that doesn't say upright and then you have italics that you can use. And so you have the cursive effects. OK, all right. <laughs> and that's basically all you need to know about fonts. Now, whatever you can do, you can just look up all your fonts that you want to use and incorporate them. And everything should be fine. I'm just going to search. I'm just going to put back my usual color theme just because I like it better. It's I use aux which is the aggressively red one. <laughs> okay. And that brings us to the Q&A session. Sorry, Jason, you know, we don't know, we don't know who Jason is, but we're sorry for the unnecessary Jason hate. <laughs> he was just being frustrating, okay? But it was also because I can't read and I thought a, a, a period was a comma. I wonder if you can actually import comic sans i could try but okay we're gonna make sure anyone has like anyone que any questions first because like this is the q a session so like if you guys have had problems while installing your um okay it works um did you like install your font and your color scheme if you like it's optional you don't have to oh yeah the thing is you can't send screenshots Okay, yeah, I'm gonna install Comic Sans. We're gonna try to install Comic Sans, Comic Sans download. This is so funny to me, bro. <laughs> this is so funny. If we if this actually works, because I don't think Comic Sans is monospace. Maybe MS is monospace. Maybe that's what it means. Okay, so um Comic Sans. Okay, so there's a bunch of this should be the one. So we're just gonna install. This is scary, but also insane. Okay, so um we're gonna go to we're gonna go to the settings again. And we're gonna go to what is it? Oh, yeah, here. And we're going to do, um, oh, we have to go to Workspace first because Workspace is the one that actually changes things. And we're going to go to, um, <laughs> we're going to set Comic Sans MS. We're going to double check that it's actually called Comic Sans MS. Yes, it's called Comic Sans MS. So Comic Sans MS. We are all going to hell. <laughs> okay. Yo, <laughs> it's Comic Sans. <laughs> you can code in Comic Sans, guys. Make your dreams come true. Yeah, so um, it looks lovely. We <laughs> I can't, I didn't know you could code in Comic Sans, but it's a mono space font. So <laughs> if you want to live a dangerous life, if you want to live a questionable life, you can code in Comic Sans. That is an option with you. That is an option for you now because you're coding in VS Code. <laughs> I know, right? 
It looks so jank. <laughs> I mean, I could get used to it though. I could get used to it. <laughs> oh no. Sonic cans. Who knows? Sonic cans could be the next Comic Sans. <laughs> okay, but I'm just gonna set. Actually, I'm not gonna get rid of it. I'm gonna keep it for a day. Programming challenge. Code and Comic Sans for a day. All right. So, but I wanna know if anyone has any questions they'd like me to answer or like help you with like problems that you've had during the installation process because um this is like the q a session russian curse of fallen you guys are gonna make me go on a font shopping spree <laughs> russian curse of monospace they better not have this no this just looks like a this just looks like regular boring face it's space um regular boring um font faces so no russian cursive mono for you r.i.p but um did like okay so you guys let me know how your installation process went like did is everything set up fine for you did you customize it to your liking everything is going good let me know even if it's going good yeah Works good for me. That's always a good sign. That's always a good sign. Not the super light theme. Change it right now. As the person presenting this talk, I order you to change it because that is a crime against humanity. But I feel okay. So I'm just, I think everyone's good because I haven't gone like if. If you're like typing out a long, if you're typing out a long like message to me, just say stop right now. Just like copy your long message and just say stop so I know that there's someone relying on my advice. But um, if there's like no issues, then I feel like everything should be cleared up and everyone can start enjoying their VS Code. But yes, and you can also ask, ask questions in the CSS Discord or if you are part of my first year's discord i'm just gonna put a link to it again um just in case it's it's my uh, discord that i made just for first year. well like it's first year centric anyone can join really because we have like roles for everyone uh but you can join it right here And basically, or you can even DM me if you have like any questions that you need help with. Cause oh, also, if you guys could show me what your theme looks like, um, like in the CSS Discord or even in the actual like first year's Discord or in my DMs, like I just like to know what people customize their theme to look like because I just like to know things. <laughs> yeah, so like let let me know what your VS code ended up looking like because I'm curious to see. <laughs> but aside from that aside from that i think everyone is on the right track everyone's going well with their vs code they're ready to live their best vs code no no machine life love that for us so i'm gonna say that this talk is done and i hope you guys learned a lot from me and as always just feel free to contact me on my um socials or anything that you need um and you guys can let me know how your vs code looks like in the css discord and i hope you guys all have an awesome night <laughs> thank you so so much for tuning in bye